Hi, everybody. Jean Humbrecht with Humbrecht Law, criminal and traffic defense attorney in Manassas, Virginia. Welcome to my weekly Wednesday local business spotlight. Um, this is our next edition in our series on how to start a successful business. I have a special guest today, Chris Peden of Peden Accounting Services. Uh, Chris Peden is a CPA, CMA, and CFM. He is the owner of Peden Accounting Services in Manassas, Virginia. He helps business owners organize and make sense of their financial information in a way that allows them to understand what they need to do to take their business to the next level. He also helps his clients not only meet their tax reporting requirements, but helps them put together and implement a plan to save money on taxes during the year so their tax bills are as low as possible. I think we all could use your services for that. Um, so today, Chris is going to be talking to us about things small businesses uh, can deduct that they may or may not know when starting a business, as well as uh, tax saving strategies that could help um, when you start and grow your business. So um, with that, Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, if you could tell everybody a little bit about yourself, um, what you want everybody to know. Well, I'm a CPA based out of Manassas. I've gotten to know Gene a little bit over the past year. We're both entrepreneurs uh, growing, and I like to help. Uh, I'm a kind of person who likes to help people and explain things, and without the uh, highfalutin terms that an old boss of mine, uh, he used that term a lot, highfalutin. Um, you can tell him a little bit from the South. And But what I like to do is put this in a way that normal people can understand it, uh, not, not CPAs uh, going through and looking at the different pronouncements, but normal people should be able to understand this and know how to use the tax code to save them money on their taxes, as well as keep money in their pockets rather than sending it off to Uncle Sam and then getting something back up to 16 months later when they file their tax return. So that's kind of what I like doing. Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, what small businesses can deduct that they might not know. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I guess, I guess assume that everybody watching is starting from scratch. You know, what, what is it that most people uh, don't know that they can deduct? Well, the big one is going to be a self, uh, excuse me, small business retirement plan. So we've talked to your financial advisor. Most people would have an IRA, which is you can deduct $6,000 if you're single or $12,000 you and your spouse can deduct that. But it, the small business retirement plans are much more powerful because you can deduct a bigger amount based on the amount of earnings that you have in your business. So if you were earning $100,000, you could put it into an IRA or you could talk to your CPA and say, well, how much can be deducted here? And it's going to be much more than $6,000. You can get started on saving for retirement as well as cut your taxes. And the great thing about that is if you have a plan set up by the end of the prior year, you don't have to make a contribution to that plan until April 15th. So you can have someone like me do the return and then I'll be able to say, all right, here's how you did. And now here's how much you contribute to the plan and save even more. So that's one of the great things about that. So I always encourage my small business clients, hey, talk to your financial advisor, make sure that you have this set up before the end of the year so we can have some big tax savings for those. That's the biggest one I run into. Um, also, everyone knows about the home office. Make sure that this is not being used for something else. Um, I work a lot at my dining room table. My, my boys and I and my wife eat there. I can't deduct it because I'm using it for something else. So make sure that it is a room that is used purely for business. Um, also, buy health insurance. You can take, if you're a self-employed person and you can't be on someone else's policy, you can deduct the premiums on your tax return if you're self-employed. So those are going to be the big three that I always go to people and tell them, hey, this is something that you can deduct. Um, so those are the big, like I said, the big three that people need to know about when they're sitting down and planning out their business. Hmm. Yeah, at first I did not know that I could deduct the health insurance uh, payments and looking back on it, I hope I figured that out in time to use it to my advantage, but I might have to go back and amend one of my tax returns. I don't know. Um, you got two years to do it, so go for it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, this is, you know, a lot of, a lot of people don't know that. And uh, even still, I wonder, can I deduct this? Can I deduct that? Um, so what are, what are some common deductions that actually, can you talk more about the home office? Cause I think, I think that's something that people might be confused about. Okay, so really, like I said, it is a room that's set aside in your house 
that is used purely for business purposes. And then what happens is you, you get out the measuring tape and you measure the dimensions of the room and you say, all right, well, I have so much square footage here. My whole house is so much. You can go on Redfin or Realtor.com, look up your house, see how much square footage is in there, or it's going to be in your property tax bill. Say you have this much square footage in your house. So you take that percentage, your home office divided by square footage of your total home, and that's how much you can deduct. And what are you deducting? Mortgage interest payments, homeowners insurance, uh, utilities, uh, any kind of repairs that are being done. And you'll also be able to take a little bit of depreciation on the portion of your house uh, that is the home office. So really what I'm going to be asking you for, I'm going to get your mortgage interest statements or tell me how much you're paying in rent. If you're renting, you can take this too. You're just going to use a rent instead of the mortgage interest. How much are you paying for homeowners insurance? What are your utility bills? So we can have all this here so we can get you as big a deduction as possible. Huh. I was going to ask about the renting. I had no idea. Yes. Well, that stinks. I have All right. Been- so we need to take a look at your retired returns. Bring them in. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, that's why we're doing this. You see, guys, this just goes to show you this is not scripted and planned. I had no idea that I could deduct my home office uh, from my rent. I thought it was only if I was a homeowner. Well, I'm glad I asked. Chris, we might need to have another conversation about looking at my past taxes later. Um, Now, what if somebody else uses the office, like a spouse or a kid for school or something like that? Well, you really want to be careful there because the IR, this is one uh, deduction that can get abused. You want to make sure that it's being used just for business. Oh, no, Chris, are we losing you? I'm still here. Can you hear me? I think we're losing Chris. I'm, I'm saying that I'm here. Are you there? Yes. All right. So you said you want to be careful when I asked about other people using the home office. Yeah, because the IRS will look at this. If, you know, if someone comes in, the kid just decides to, you know, color on your desk. Okay. Maybe once in a while, that's fine. But it, the, the purpose of the office is to be doing business. So just make sure that most of the time that the vast majority of the time that you are actually doing this for business purposes and not, you know, uh, tell your, tell your in-laws, no, you can't stay. We don't have a room for you because we're, I'm using his home office. I don't want to get in trouble with the IRS. So it's a good way of getting out of a visit from your in-laws. So something (laughs) to keep in mind. That's a good idea. Um, You also mentioned putting away money for retirement. Um, What do you, and you know, I, when people start a business, as I mentioned in one of my previous lives, there's a lot of different people. They talk to an accountant, um, maybe a financial advisor, a business attorney, all that. So this might kind of delve into those other areas. But um, what if they say, you know, I don't I don't have enough money to put away into retirement. Uh, do you do you get involved in that conversation at all? Or is that more for the financial advisor? Well, I have a great financial advisor I recommend over at Whitlock Wealth Management. Um, and they're the ones who will sit down with you and say, here, this is what has, uh, this is what you can do. So it doesn't hurt to sit down and start asking questions. Uh, you know, there's no question it's stupid if you don't know the answer and are committed to making sure that you're taken care of financially. I'd rather have clients come to me and say, you know, hey, I heard I was at the bar with my friends. We had a few and someone said that, hey, if I have an um, alpaca packet in my house, I can really, I can use, claim them as a deduction. And I said, well, okay, hold the phone here. That's they're probably not true, but please ask me about it. I'd rather have people come to me during the year and ask what they may think is a, a dumb question. Be so, because then we can make, it, maybe it's true. Maybe it's something you can deduct. Maybe something you had that I have need to delve into a little bit more and find out if you can do it. But we can put a plan in place then and there to make sure that we can be deducted. Okay. Oh, and then I did mention a couple of times amending prior returns. I was I was mostly kidding about that. Um, can you tell people, you know, about about that process? Um, if you know, maybe they've been a small business owner for a few years, like me, and then um, you know, whether it's business 
um, issue or not, you know, can if, if they discovered that they could have taken some deductions or done some things on taxes that would have helped them, can they go back and um, fix that basically to get the money? Absolutely. You have up to three years to amend a return and, and also, well, three years to amend a return and then get a refund back. If it's any further back than that, then you're going to lose out on a refund. But here's the thing, if you're going to end up owing more, the IRS will still make you pay it, even though it's beyond that three years. So if you think that you can get some money back, talk to a CPA and see what can happen with it. So there you go. Okay. Well, that's a good idea. It's worth a conversation. Absolutely. Um, before we go on, I just want to say to anybody that's watching, um, let us know where you're checking in from. And if you have any questions for Chris while he is here, um, it's always beneficial to have an accountant or an attorney <laughs> at your fingertips. Uh, he's still able to answer, um, obviously, probably not every question because some things are fact specific. But if you have questions about what we're talking about or what you can deduct, feel free to type those in the chat and I will ask Chris. Um, so another one that I always found interesting when I, cause I do my own taxes. Um, well, I probably shouldn't anymore. Um, but when it comes to de deducting uh, using your car for work, you can either deduct the mileage or the gas, right? Wait. Yes, you're, Gene, you're absolutely right. So what happens is, is that start tracking your miles, not just for your personal, not just for your business, for your personal, because it's the same thing as a home office. I can take it for, take, here's how many miles that you drove for business. And then here's a, the, everybody that comes out every year, the IRS says you can take so much of the, so many cents per mile to and take that as a, a, a deduction for it. Or if you have the keep track of the actual expenses, gas repairs, property taxes, what have you on the vehicle, we'll do a comparison to make sure, um, see what is the best thing for you to do uh, as far as what's taking, whether the uh, it's called the standard mileage or the actual mileage. So start keeping track of those. I, I will say if we also do the actual mileage method, you can also deduct parking and tolls in addition to what you're paying uh, the uh, the mileage that you're getting reimbursed for from the IRS. I thought you could always deduct the parking and tolls. Is that not correct? No, that's absolutely correct. It goes under both both ways. You can do it under the, oh, the mile, okay. standard mileage or the actual. So it can kind of go both kind of go both ways. Okay. Um. Well, are there any other? Um, mistakes, I guess, or um, misconceptions that new business owners have about what they can do on, on their taxes? Because I'm, I'm asking that because I'm wondering if, you know, knowing in advance they can prepare instead of having to go back and see if they can take advantage of anything that, you know, they've done or purchased. Right. Well, the big thing is going to be make sure that you set up a separate bank account Mm -hmm. And anything having to do with the business, you use that bank account. I had um, a friend of mine who went and they had a plumbing business and they needed a computer for it. And they went out to Best Buy, put down their personal card, bought the computer, brought it home, started using it, listed on their tax return. And they were one of the 1% that got audited. The, the IRS agent looked at that and said, nope, this is, a, this is a personal computer. You bought it with your personal funds. This is not deductible. You lose that $1,000 uh, deduction. Wait so, a minute. Wait a minute. So if somebody uses their personal card to purchase something instead of their business card, but only uses it for work, they cannot deduct that? Well, what I would say, if you did something like that during during the year and then you realize, oops, then what I would do is have your business reimburse you for what you spent. Then it's deductible. OK. Huh. I'm glad I asked that question. I did not know that. Um, Mar Marvin Powell, uh, you know, Marvin, everybody knows Marvin Powell. He, Marvin. <laughs> he asked about health care deductions. Um, we kind of already talked about that. But um, aside from just deducting the monthly premiums that you spend. Well, so I guess first, can can you deduct the premiums no matter what, whether the, the insurance comes through your business or whether you just pay for it on your own? Well, it, once you want to set it up, if you're a sole proprietor, just doing business on your own. You can and, and you cannot be uh, 
it's not possible that you can be on someone else's um, insurance. Say if you start your own business and your spouse has a plan through their work, you're not going to be eligible because you could have gotten insurance through them. That's so keep that in mind. But what's going to be deductible are going to be the premiums. And I would do those through the business. Um, so I would say, make sure that the business business pays for it. Okay. So if you're a small business owner, you can get insurance through your business, which a lot of people might not know that too. Um, so, but it has, it has to be through your business in order to get the deduction. If your spouse has insurance and you do it through your business, you cannot get the deduction because you could have gone it, gotten the insurance from your spouse. Yes. Okay. And then if you don't have the insurance through your business, but just pay for an individual plan, you can't deduct that either. Well, if you're a sole proprietor, you're not really going to be set up. You have, say if you're set up as an LLC or something like that, then then you're in business. But if you're a sole proprietor and you're just doing you're doing business and it's under your social security number and you buy it through a insurance provider, then yes, you can go ahead and pay for insurance and um, and, and deduct it. Okay, I'm so seeing, it depends. On, it depends on the way that you're incorporated. The way exactly. that you're okay. Yes. Okay, so that's probably another reason why a new business owner should talk to a business attorney. Well, actually, I, before I even say that, um, I assume that the business attorney is the one that talks to small business owners about how they should incorporate. But is that a conversation that you, as an accountant, have with them also? Yeah, I work with the attorneys as well, just to get the tax. Here's going to be the taxes that are going to be on it. Say if they're an S corp, if they should be an S corporation mm -hmm. or an LLC, there's a, a difference in what you can, the, not necessarily what you can deduct, but what the um, what the better form is going to be for you based on what your circumstances are. So that's a conversation between three people. Okay. Okay. So it's common for a small business owner to talk to an accountant and um, a business attorney all at the same time? Yes. Okay. Um, who would you suggest they, a business owner talks to first, the first professional when they start their business? I would really talk to a attorney first. Um, may sound weird because I'm, I'm a CPA, but they're the ones who are going to be able to look at your situation and say, here's going to be the legal things you need to jump through. And mm -hmm. then also go talk to your accountant and say, this is what I'm thinking of. How, what's the best format for me? Because there's going to be, there may be things that you can do in your business setting up beyond the setting up the format. If you're in a certain profession or if, you know, if or if you're going to be doing certain things, then you want to make sure that everything is nice and legal with the, with the attorney and then talk to the CPA. So I'd say talk to a business attorney first. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's some good advice. Cause I, I know when business, well, I mean, you're a business owner, you know how it is when, um, when you start a business, you're kind of overwhelmed with all the different things that you need to do and trying to figure out what you absolutely have to do, what you have to do first, what you can put on hold. Um, so it can be a little, um, daunting, but, um, but yeah, having a conversation with a business attorney and, and most will do, you know, free consultations, um, you know, but if you if you need them for more, then that's what they're there for. Um, and then definitely, definitely an accountant. Um, I, um, you know, looking back, I kind of wish that I, I would have done. I don't regret anything that I did, but I, I, I wish that I would have done um, a few things a little bit differently. Like I wish I would have talked to an accountant in the very beginning. Um, actually, which leads me to another question. Um, so, I mean, I'm an attorney and I'm, I'm familiar with the different ways that businesses incorporate. Um, so, you know, I knew what I wanted to do for my business, but let's say that somebody doesn't talk to some of these professionals and they start their business. Let's say they want to change the way they're incorporated. Um, is it, is it too late to do that after they've already started and, and registered with the state corporation commission? Oh, I think we lost Chris again. Chris, are you there? Well, I hope Chris will log back in. 
if any anybody that's still out there, type in questions or let me know you're here. I know Marvin asked a, a really good question, and I'm glad you asked Marvin because we learned out some we learned something interesting there. So Marvin, if you're still there, thank you for asking that question. Um, it actually is uh, more complicated than I would have thought. And if anybody missed that answer, because I'm just going to talk until Chris logs back on. Um, yep, he's gone. Um, well, we'll see if he comes back. Uh, if anybody missed that answer, it was um, if you have insurance through your business um, as a small business owner, you can deduct that if it is um, through, if you just have it individually, uh, you cannot. And if you have it through your business, but you're, you have a spouse and you could have had it from your spouse's insurance, then you cannot deduct that. Um, so it's very important to talk to an accountant um, before you decide, you know, what decisions you're going to make about the health insurance and, you know, whether you're going to try to deduct them. Um, well, I will give Chris another minute because I am not qualified to talk about this stuff. Um, I could talk about criminal law all day long, but not accounting. Um, here he is. He's back. Chris, I'm so I'm glad back. you just, I'm so glad you came back because I said, I'm not qualified to talk about any more of this. I was just blabbing. I said, I'll talk about criminal law all day long, but not, not this. Right. Well, you were talking about bringing in professionals and um, mm -hmm. to delve a little bit into your area. I remember hearing about uh, Clarence Darrow was arrested at one time. They asked him, what are you going to do? He says, well, I guess I better get an attorney. If that mm -hmm. man needs an attorney to bring someone in, it's always good to have professionals. And that's actually a tax saving strategy is to bring in professionals because mm -hmm. what are you spending most of your time on is, uh, you know, if you're going to sit down and Google and go through and trying to figure out all this tax stuff where I can tell you an answer in five minutes, it's a better use of your time. Then you take that other 55 minutes and you can go earn some money. Yep. Yep. Time is money. Yes, ma'am. Yep. And then at least that way, you know, the answers um, to your questions and you know what to do. And then you, from there, you choose what you're gonna what you're gonna do based on that. But at least you can make informed decisions. So yes, yeah. Uh, well, is is there anything else? I mean, because I mean, there's really so much when when it comes to um, deductions and the Schedule C and um, the Schedule C for anyone that doesn't. Know, well, why don't you tell what a Schedule C is? <laughs> okay, so when you're a business owner and you're a sole proprietor or an LLC. Your taxes uh, the, uh, are going to be reported on the Schedule C. It says you have your sales and then you have all your expenses. And then that amount's going to roll onto your 1040 and you're going to calculate your self-employment taxes on those. So the Schedule C is just part of the 1040 package, like the Schedule A for itemized deductions or Schedule D, uh, which is going to be the capital gains and losses from selling uh, investments. Mm hmm yeah, so Schedule C is where you deduct the parking and office supplies and computers and rent and furniture and um, mileage and all that good stuff. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, well, um, if anybody has any more questions, feel free to type them in. And even after, because, um, you know, this video is going to be on Facebook and I'm going to be doing replay. So if somebody watches this later and has a question, feel free to type it in the comments and uh, Chris and I will be notified. Um, but before we go, is there anything else you want to tell any small business owners um, that they might not know or just anything else we didn't talk about that you think would be useful? Absolutely. Uh, for, number one, as I said before, set up a separate bank account. That helps with uh, the legality of the expenses and being able to deduct them. Second, get set up on a good accounting program. Uh, I know a lot of bookkeepers here that can help you walk you through it. QuickBooks has gotten so much more user friendly that you could even set up a self-employed QuickBooks and have everything in there. Plus, when the IRS comes back and they can see that you've set up QuickBooks, it shows you're serious about the business, things are organized, they're going to have an easier time believing what you tell them when then this is this is what happened in my operations. Plus, it makes you feel like a business owner and you're taking this year. You're a, a powerful CEO like uh, Jean Humbrecht, uh, attorney at law, is. So you can be in her league. Oh, well, I don't know about that, but I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, OK, well, Chris, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I, I really appreciate your time. And I mean, I, I thought um, not to sound cocky or anything, but I thought I knew some stuff. But nope. 
you've, you've educated me today and I'm sure everybody out there watching. So um, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Gene, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me on. No problem. I'm, I'm sure I will see you soon. <laughs> Ma'am. Really. <laughs> All right. Well, have a good day, Chris. Thanks again. You too. Bye. Bye.